Hey, what's up? It's Tricky. Welcome to part two of the Iron Man Jarvis robot build. So if you remember, this is some of the stuff that we could get a program to do last time. Hi, how are you? I am doing well. Please bring me the hammer. Okay, I'll bring you the hammer. Okay, now put the hammer back. Okay, I'll put the hammer away. What time is it? It's 11.58 a.m. Now we're going to add the ability to do this. What's up? I am doing well. Cool, that's good. Uh, so I've been wondering, what is a hippopotamus? The common hippopotamus, or hippo, is a large, mostly herbivorous, semi-aquatic mammal and ungulate native to sub-Saharan Africa. Oh, neat. But what is an herbivore? A herbivore is an animal anatomically and physiologically adapted to eating plant material. For example, foliage or marine algae, for the main component of its diet. Tell me more. As a result of their plant diet, herbivorous animals typically have mouth parts adapted to rasping or grinding. Horses and other herbivores have wide, flat teeth that are adapted to grinding grass, tree bark, and other tough plant material. Convert 30,000 meters to miles. 30,000.0 meters equals 18.639 miles. That's actually somewhat unexpected. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, you can shut down. Shutting down. Part one, we made a program that was able to tell us it was going to bring us a certain tool or put a certain tool away, but it was just a program. It couldn't do anything. Originally, I was going to wait to make this part two until I was ready to actually assemble that robot and put it together, but it's taking a while for the parts to get here. So in the meantime, I figured I would make a video documenting some of the updates to that program that have made it a little more thorough, a little more realistic, and a little more like Jarvis. Let's talk about how we got our program to do that. The first thing we got to look into is this dictionary here, which is going to contain lists of words. And these list of words are all going to be sort of synonyms for a major command that we want. One of those commands might be shut down. And there's a lot of things that we might say that should indicate to the computer that it should shut down. Namely, shut down, obviously. But things like switch off, turn off, go to sleep, good night, all of those things should result in the computer shutting down. We have a lot of those. We have words that indicate that the program should tell us what time it is. Namely, what time is it? What time it is? The time or things that should indicate that it should bring something to us, maybe bring, get, fetch, grab, you get the idea. So the three main functions we looked at here were a definition, and this gives it away a little bit, we're gonna get the definition from Wikipedia, a summary, also from Wikipedia, and then this conversion. So if I scroll down, notice we have a second dictionary here. And this dictionary is going to have all the same keys as that wordless dictionary, that means it's going to have shutdown, wikidef, wiki summary, tools, convert, but, it's going to have a Boolean value, in this case, default being false, for each of them. And what that's going to do is it's going to store whether or not the command we have given contains one of the words in one of those lists. Right, for example, well, let's just look right here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at every key, so every one of those keywords, and we're going to look at the list that is associated with it. And if that, if any of the words in there are in our command, then we're going to set the Boolean value in that Boolean dictionary to true. That'll be executed for every one of the keys, and then we'll start looking at which ones end up being turned on. So for example, if the Boolean for the key shut down is true, then we're going to execute this shutdown business. Right, so now we're going to look at specifically the three that we talked about. That's going to be the definition from Wikipedia, then the summary, and then the convert. So let's look at those one at a time. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the wiki definition. So if at any point I say something that is in this wiki def list, let's look at what those are, by the way. If I say something like, tell me about, or who is, or what is. So if I were to say, like, who is Obama, or, I don't know, tell me about pencils, then it would know that it should set the wiki def fully into true. And then this will execute. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for whatever that word was that triggered it, so let's say that I had said, tell me about pencils. So it's going to search for that tell me about. It's going to take everything that came after tell me about. And then it's going to give me the wiki def for that subject. One thing I'll note is that this subject is actually a global variable up here. We hang on to this because if we then later say, tell me more about it, then we know what it is referring to. It is referring to this subject. So we don't have to repeat, tell me about pencils, because that's not really how we speak. But back to business. Let's look at this get wiki definition. Note, by the way, we imported Wikipedia. What we're going to do is we're going to 
this call the summary command from Wikipedia, which is going to give us the full summary of whatever that topic is. Then we're going to have our definition just be the first sentence of the Wikipedia summary. So we're going to split on the sentences, and then we're going to take the first sentence and then return that. Now the wiki summary code is quite similar. So as long as the subject is not empty, uh, we're just going to give the summary of whatever the subject is. Now if we look at the wiki summary function, it's very similar to the first one. We're going to get the summary from the Wikipedia page. And this time what we're going to do is separate it by sentences and return everything except for the first sentence, right? Because we already gave the first sentence in the definition. And if we say, tell me more about it, we wouldn't want to hear a repetition of what was already said. We're going to add a period to the end because remember we stripped off the period and append that to our summary. So now our summary is going to be everything in the Wikipedia summary except for that first sentence. So all that leaves is this conversion function. So if the program finds that we wanted it to convert something, indicated by the fact that the Boolean value for the key convert is set to true, then it's going to run the conversion. In this conversion function, we're going to take everything that came after the word convert. And in order to do these conversions, we need to be able to relate these values to each other, right? So we're going to relate everything to the meter. The meter is going to have a value of one. And then we're going to say, okay, how many inches are in a meter? This is the value. How many feet are in a meter? This is the value. How many yards are in a meter? This is the value. And using these values, we'll be able to convert everything between everything else, even if it doesn't include a meter, by the way. We also want to have a dictionary of all the abbreviations of all of these units. We say one inch and we want it to convert inches. We, all, we, we want the computer to know that those two are really equivalent values. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the word after convert, which is going to be our value. That's going to be the number. So if remember, we have the sentence five inches to meters. That first thing is going to be the value five. The first unit is going to be inches. So that'll be what comes next. And what we're going to do there is take whatever that value is. So in this case, it's inches. And we're going to put it through our abbreviation dictionary. So we'll take inches. We'll look here. Inches just refers to inches. Great. That's easy. And so now inches is our first unit. Our second unit is going to be the exact same thing, except on the string two after that first unit. So in this case, meters program would go to the Brev dictionary and it would see meters and meters just references meters. Perfect. So now we have our two units and we have the value. So what we have to do to find our conversion is we're going to take the conversion dictionary value for that second unit. So in this case, that's meters. That's easy. It's one. And that first unit, which is inches. So it's 39.37 whatever. So that'll be our conversion ratio. And what we're going to do is take that conversion ratio multiply it by the value. And if something goes wrong somewhere in this process, we'll just say, sorry, I didn't understand that. And then hopefully the user will just repeat themselves or change up their wording a bit so that the syntax is correct. And then they'll get a proper answer. So there you go. That was a bit of an update to the code. I'll be making part three when the parts arrive and we'll actually be putting this robot together. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe and I hope you enjoyed the video.